Done it. Yeah, it's bloody rare because I mean you're but stuck just, in that kind yeah. of mold of let's just yeah. do the same thing yeah. every day, every yeah. day. I know. I might, that. I might ask this question off camera. Do you yeah. find that that's just in this country? Do you find that like I, there's not a lot of hustle hustlers and movers and shakers here? Um, yeah, well, it probably. I mean, I know America's cult, American culture is a hustle culture. It yeah. hasn't been from the start. Australian yeah. hasn't been. Yeah, I and mean, that's why Turnbull brought in this entrepreneurial skew and digital. Um, you know, entrepreneurial, yeah, and it kind of just went by the way, so like nothing really happened, but they're trying to do it. Yeah. Doesn't. I've got a friend who he's, he's you know, started businesses, yeah. but he, he and I have really long conversations about the Australian culture when it comes to yeah. entrepreneurialism yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And he, he actually has this theory that Australians as a culture, they don't have the drive or the... Well, it's the lucky country. It's the laid back. Exactly. It's like, we're just so like, well, we don't need anything. Yeah. So why yeah. would we work yeah. for it? You know what I mean? So like, and, yeah. And that... in many ways, we kind of don't. Like yeah. well, some of this stuff is kind of, fi- are you filming this? Because yeah. yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. some of this is like, yeah. some of these ideas that we have are really fictional. Like yeah. to have money and to have success and that. Like it's all good, but you don't really need it. Like yeah. you don't, like you can be happy with all that stuff. So mm. I think a lot of the Australian culture probably came from that. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of it's probably American culture. And capitalist culture has come yeah. in and sort of bred us to want things yeah, right. and create desire yeah. through advertising and all this sort of stuff. And so, yeah. what, is, what is it do you think that is that that people want? What, why do we do this? I think people <laughs> want freedom. Everyone wants freedom. Yeah. Right? That's what yeah. people want. They don't want to yeah. feel like they're a slave to someone yeah. or something. And that's what the idea of work is, right? And you know, you guys Definitely. with your brain is we, we, we. I don't have time to work. Yeah, you know, so. People want freedom. They don't mm. want to work. And if they want to work, they want to do something they love. They do something that's happy, and then on their own, accord. on their own accord, yeah. and that's freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, Daniel, thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> it was a good little intro. We <laughs> that had. was awesome. I could, yeah, I love this good. stuff. This yeah. is good. Yeah. And uh, so, Daniel, um, we're here at your beautiful home office at uh, on beautiful Caves Beach, New yeah. South Wales, yep. uh, talking to Daniel, the owner. Founder, entrepreneur, <laughs> the man of Cyborg. Um, so, um, mate, look, give us a give us a bit of background on you know how it started and, yeah, and right. what made you do it. Um, this business is in its thirteenth year now, so I've been yeah. going for, for just over twelve years. And I started when I was working full time as a designer at a advertising agency, and I decided to give my own business a crack. You know, yeah. my my wife's a clinical psychologist, and um, she. Just got a full time job in a government role, so I thought, well, we can use her as a backup plan, yeah, and go full time for myself. Um, I won a national design award, so that was a bit of a leverage for me to sort of, uh, you know, have the confidence. I don't think it was yeah. a marketing tool, it was just for me to say, well, I can do good design, mm. I don't need to do this for other people, I can do it for myself and my own client. So, yeah, I um, made the move and took a risk, and, and I've loved it. I mean, I've had, got some experience in running my own business as well as at uni. We did this thing called Studio 4, which is where you actually run a design studio and you get real clients and you do things like that. And, and our team, we won some awards in the projects we were doing there. So we, we had good real world experience. And I was running Cyborg on the side as well back then while I was at uni. And I was getting real clients like doing surfboard graphics and murals and yeah. sort of just like fun sort of stuff. Yeah. Just by me hustling and knocking down, knocking on doors and yeah. saying, I'll do it. And a lot of time it was for free just to get exposure and to get experience and to get a portfolio, a real yeah. portfolio. 
and just like things like that just build up with just mm. little steps and um you kind of do you feel like each step you take you kind of like yeah i can do this yes. i can do this Confidence i can do this building, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely for sure, for sure. How, can you explain like that that first step and and what it what it kind of what did it take for you to take that first step well when i was full-time with an employer mm. It was partly my wife having the backup for me, like sort of saying, yeah, hey, do it, it's all good. So having that confidence from her mm. um, and knowing that we had a backup plan. So that was good. Um, but also having the having had real work experience for quite a while, like I've worked in the advertising world for about six years out of uni. So just knowing how to, how to do, like communicate with clients and how to um, interpret briefs and how to deliver and make sure that you wow them every time, you know, you'd say yeah. you, so just, you just learn a lot on, on, on doing the little steps behind the scenes until you're ready to sort of go, yeah, I've got the ammunition now to take it full time and, yeah. and go forth. I felt like I always had a desire to run my own business, even back from uni and before that. My mum's a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. She run little businesses for herself and I got to work for her in little businesses and stuff. I'm talking like micro businesses, nothing massive, but just still that's where you learn people skills, yeah. where you learn how to, what to ask for in terms of money. Um, how to negotiate. There's so mm. many little things you learn, exactly. even from a micro level. Yep. Um, so I always had that in the back of my mind. So I was like a slingshot. So I was just like gathering all the ammunition yeah. as long as I could yeah. until I sort of saw the window opportunity. And the internet was starting to take off. Mm. I saw the AI, the future of AI, yep. which is part of the um, philosophy behind the, the branding of Cyborg. And yep. not that I do AI, but there's a whole cultural shift towards yep. technology. I saw that like, you know, 20 years ago when I come up with a name mm. and I sort of wanted to position myself to, to capitalize on that, you know, 10, 20 years down the track and it's, it's, coming, awesome. it's been coming into fruition. Yeah. Now look, the name yeah. Cyborg, yeah. like I, I heard, I've, I've heard, <laughs> yeah, you know, how I was created, but yeah. for everyone who's listening, mate, like tell us, cause I think it's awesome. Oh, it's, well, my surname is Borg, Daniel yeah. Borg. And yeah. um, so that's the first bit. I wanted to obviously put a personal touch to yeah. the brand. Um, we had to come up with a name for a business assignment at uni. Yeah. And, um, so we had to come up with our own business name, basically. So I just brainstormed names. Um, I was thinking of all these names around Borg. Just, uh, basically, I was called Borgie at school and Borganator and all that, just any Borg <laughs> yeah, kind of term, you know. Like, just Australian to Aussie yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I didn't want it to be like Borgie or whatever. So yeah. I wanted it to be kind of cool, I guess, or different. And uh, my wife's a clinical psychologist, so was, she was studying psychology at the time. And I always thought of cyborg, but C Y B O R G, but I just felt like that was naff. Yeah. You know, it was a bit cliche and Terminator and all that sort of stuff. It's was, it was, it got its own genre. Yeah. But I wanted to borrow that genre because like, I'm into the techie sort of space as well. So PSY, I just sort of jumped out after writing hundreds of names on a page. Mm. My wife being clinical, so and I was like, that's like, that's the mind, it's thinking, it's creativity. Um, and then with Borg, it's like mine, Borg, it's Daniel Borg, it's what I do, being creative and doing design work. So I just work, and then there's the spin of um, the technology side of things because it sounds like Cyborg, the other Cyborg. Um, and then I've come up with a slogan, part mind, part machine. So yes. everyone thinks of Cyborg being part man, part machine. Yeah. So I just flipped it to part mind, part machine, which yeah. works with computers and creativity. Yeah. So you think about the brief, you solve the brief, and then you use machines to you know, deliver the brief, like deliver the concept. Do it more effectively, yeah, more efficiently. Yeah, more efficiently. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. You mentioned before about, so you said you you, you, know, you named the brief 20 years ago and you yeah. kind of saw that shift coming. Yeah. Yeah. What was what were some of the things that you saw 20 years ago? Well, it's funny, I did engineering before design, yeah. so I think I had a bit of a heads up in the engineering world and I remember going to a a lecture in engineering and they said can you give us an idea of like time frame for this yeah oh, okay what's this what are we now 2000 so 2018 now would have been have to be like 2008 or something yep yeah. or maybe no that's probably 2005 yeah, yeah around that 2005 yeah. yeah yeah um and they said that information is going to be the next currency that's mm. what i was saying that information is the next wave so we've had the you know the iron age the yep. um the Stone Age, the Stone you know, all age, the ages, the ages yeah, yeah, all the ages, but they were talking about information, information age, and information is yeah. power. Yeah. And when you think about that, well, what controls information? How does information get distributed? All that sort of stuff. And mm. it's sort of the, well, the future view of that is AI. That's how it's going to be working. Like, you know, we're all yeah. feeding the AI machine right now through social media yeah. and Google a lot of things <laughs> and that, stuff like that, yeah. 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 Um, so I did, and I did a lot of computer science subjects in engineering mm. back then, and I wasn't great at those subjects, but I understood the concepts yeah. and sort of, 
sort of thought about it through that, yeah. So, yeah. look, if we start getting on the AI yeah. conversation, we'll be yeah. here like the yeah. entire day. Yeah. So we probably won't do that. But yeah. oh, there is one more question I have to ask you about this, and it's just because it is so relevant. Yeah. A lot of people out there would have seen there's been yeah. so much talk on the internet about the Elon Musk interview yeah, with Joe Rogan. Rogan. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, have you had the chance to watch that? And yeah, I watched it twice. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, well, actually, I've listened to it twice. I want to yeah. watch it because I want to see their yeah, expressions because yeah. you get more out of that. But yeah. I listen to it while I'm washing the dishes and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, what, what was the kind of? What was the kind of? Is there something? Is there anything in there? Because a lot of people have listened to it and they're like, "Wow, yeah. I didn't know. Oh my god, oh, this is crazy." Whole, so, is there anything in there that, like, in, in regards to the AI thing, since yeah. we're talking about that, that you're kind of like, of course, like, well. I I understood the idea of social media um, being used as an engine to feed the machine, I suppose, because like, yep. we're all putting in data. But I hadn't heard it articulated in that way, and like you know, the way you like must said it was just so quick and easy. Yeah. It just <laughs> made sense, and like yeah. I don't like like people don't think of it that way, but yeah. it's true. Like, mm. um, like every Google search someone does is feeding the machine. Mm. Every but like you think of these platforms like Facebook and Instagram as private platforms, not really on the web. They're sort of in their own thing. Mm. But they've got their own AI machines that no doubt they will partner with Google or they're probably selling it off or whatever they're doing there. Yep. There's got to be ways for them to utilize it. Mm. So I'd never really, it hadn't been articulated like that to me before. So yeah. that was a bit of a light bulb as well for me as well. Yeah. Like, um, but there's so many things in that interview yeah. that you talked about. It's crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But um, I, just another really yeah. quick thing on that that you mentioned. I remember watching a, I watched a rerun of an interview with Jeff Bezos yeah. from '99, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Um, and when he just like just become a billionaire. Yeah, right. Back yeah. in '99, yeah. and it was, uh, and he was saying about how on the Amazon platform at the time, yeah. they were like for when people were doing searches and finding yeah. something, the intelligence was exactly. Regarded, yeah. and you know, oh, you might, might like this, you might yeah. like that. And it's funny how you say that. Like, so back in 2005, yeah. when they're talking about the information age and that kind of thing, it was in place yeah. even before that, isn't Mate, it? I've, so, I've written a blog article which is coming out soon. It's called Invisible Architecture. Yeah. And what all this is, is like, you know, when you go to a shopping center, um, they put the eggs right at the far end and the milk at one other end, and it yes. makes you have to walk through to get stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what Amazon does by knowing all your information. So yeah. um, that, it's kind of reverse of that in a way. Like, they understand your buying habits and what you're searching for and everything like that. Mm. And then they customize your experience to that that yep. experience, which is all that AI behind the scenes. Yeah. And I sort of call That's, it invisible, invisible um, yeah. architecture. I can't remember what it's called the article, but yeah. And then and, and Facebook's doing that with Google Pixel, uh, mm. Facebook Pixel and Google's doing that with Google remarketing, there's all these platforms that are doing it through their algorithms and through all the research they've got on you. They're repositioning and tailoring the experience to you only. Mm. You know, everyone's talking about that with Facebook things now. It's sort of, you understand the news from a left point of view or a right point of view based on the things that you're liking and, and yep. commenting on and things like that. So everyone's um, experience is getting siloed, yeah. you know? And yeah. I, I listened to a guy named Sam Harris. Yeah. Um, on yeah. some podcasts, and he's talking about how that's why you're getting all these Trump aficionados and lovers and stuff like that. And then this is why you're getting people that hate because if they're in their own world, they think that's right. Mm. Not mm. not saying they're wrong or right, but they think it's right because yeah. like, they've got the feed. And yeah, the, they can consistently yeah. so all the things they're saying. Yeah. They're consistently getting backed up. Yeah, it's consistently there. Yeah, exactly, kind of it's getting, in their head. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and they're not seeking out alternative yeah. views. Yeah, I mean that's something I try to force myself. Yeah. Like, I, I like the left guys and I like the right guys and yeah. I like the in betweens and the whoever's. Just because you want to make sure it's mixed up, you Definitely. don't want to like get speed. Look, yeah. we, I think we're going to have to come back and do an AI talk because, like, otherwise this <laughs> interview yeah. will be like hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you mean, one hundred percent. But something that you just mentioned there. So, um, uh, how important is, is it for you to consistently get that information, but from all angles? How, yeah. how have you found that in your development? Um, like, from you know. Even even now, yeah. going forward, how important is it to get that information from everywhere yeah, rather than just one source? It feeds your creative spirit. Yeah. Like you have to have new information coming in yeah. so that you get new ideas. If you don't have any information coming in, you're relying on what, you're, what you know, your previous experience, and that can get pretty stale. Yeah. But with new information, it doesn't have to be images. It can be, thought, uh, it can be podcasts, um, you know, books, whatever. Yeah. Um, just information, and then however your brain works will interpret that and spit out new ideas. Like, yeah. so it's it's hundred percent. Like my, I guess my business 
is about me having the flexibility to have that new stuff always coming in. So I'm a creative person, which means uh, it's the right brain thinking. Things right, is it? Or left or right? It is. Let's let's say it's right. It's right. Let's say it's right. Yeah, but then the left brain is giving us a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put down the down the bottom. Whether we're wrong or right. Yeah, wrong. You know, so that means you can kind of listen to music and listen to podcasts while you're being creative and sort of letting the emotion take over. Yeah, listen to music and listen to podcasts while you're being creative and sort of letting the emotion take over. But it's when you need to read and be analytical where the other brain, sort of other side of the brain, kicks in, and it's hard to do that. So I've got, like most of my day is listening to stuff. So I get to do that while I'm creating stuff. You know? Yeah, so that's amazing. That's awesome. Bringing the yeah. information as Bring you're creating. In. And I'm so addicted. I'm doing yeah. it while I'm hanging out clothes in my wash. I'm doing it while I'm washing up. Yeah. Just, I've got the Apple earbuds, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> made the, people people yeah. should be raving about those mm. things. They are the best things ever. Like, it's got serious. So you go volume up, pause. It's crazy. You're talking to it. It's wireless. <laughs> you can do the dishes. You can mow the lawn, everything. That is, that is literally the cyborg, right? That's mm-hmm. the AI infiltrating into you. Yeah. yeah. And it's here now. Like, it's, inc- it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's let's um, start touching a bit on, yeah. on, on your business. So, yeah, cool. you know, so you mentioned uh, you started 13 years ago yeah. and how you got the name and how it's kind of progressed. Um, I guess, you know, it's really difficult to kind of put in one answer what exactly it is you, you do, do yeah. but let's, let's get just a general. Yeah. Well, I said I was on a podcast recently. I said that I sold problems for clients through communication. That's yep. in a nutshell what I do. So I help I help businesses thrive and grow through their communication needs. And communication is, everyone thinks, when you say communication, people just think verbal communication, mm-hmm. us talking right now, but it's not, it's visual communication. Yep. That's a big part of my domain, it's visual, so it's graphic design. So it's um, building websites, building advertising campaigns, branding, so designing logos, and then taking that through to all the touch points in a business. and People don't think of that as a problem, but it actually is because if you don't have a brand, how are you going to communicate? How are you going to get out in the world? I come in and I'm that middleman that solves that problem for you and, and builds a brand and makes it look amazing and have the character that you want to portray, sends the message that you want to portray, sells the emotion that you want to portray. And all of that is decoded into the, the branding and into the yeah. touch points. And when I say touch points, it's like business cards, letterhead, stationery, you know, um, signage, it's graphics on the side of your car. It's a website, it's social media, like advertising. It's um, it's any interaction that a client has from a visual point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's, that's really interesting. And yeah. when when you actually so when you started the business thirteen mm. years ago, was that something that you thought you'd offer like the entire package? Or at the time, was it just like I'm just going to do graphic design? Yeah. Well, at the time, it was just graphic yeah. design. Yeah. Like, I've learned a lot. I've done heaps of self development through the process. And running a business sort of forces you to do that. You have yeah. to keep pushing yourself and and going to the next level. So at the start, I just was doing graphic design, whatever opportunities I could get, you know, and it would be just designing a letterhead or a business card. But as I've got through and through, I understand the importance of branding. Like there's what a brand is, it's kind of like that core message that's through everything. It's your beliefs, your values, your emotions, Mm -hmm. and that gets decoded into everything. So I love it when a company comes to me with a blank canvas, they don't know who they are, and I've got a workshop process that I take them through and discover their brand, basically. So Mm -hmm. it's them. I'm just sort of tapping into it mm, and then mm. I then communicate it visually for them and, and like make sure that I wow them and wow the market, make sure that everyone loves it. And That's awesome. Yeah, I so, think it's really good at what you mentioned there about like, so a lot of people are kind of like, they try and start off and be everything. Yeah. But yeah. it's a bit like that, um, and I know we are talking before off, off camera about the Gary Vee mentality of that kind of tunnel vision where yeah. it's like, what are you good focus, at? Yeah. Focus on yeah. that. So you, that's what you obviously yeah, need to focus yeah. on. Yeah, this is what I've got my yeah. expertise in. Yeah. And then from that point, it can make well, it You get so good at one thing, yeah. you, and you saturate it so that you the bus going <laughs> past. Bus going past, yeah. <laughs> um, You saturate it, and yeah. then you start to get a bit bored in it, so yeah. you get too orderly in it. So you seek chaos. This is what um, Jordan Peterson talked about. Mm-hmm. You seek chaos, so then you go and learn something new, and yep. you go, you get, you, you apply the skills that you're really good at there yep. to that new thing, and then you get really good at that because it doesn't take long to get good at it because you're already good at something else. You know how to do it, yeah. And then all of a sudden you're building this, and you start this linking thing. it up, yeah. And then you're just building this, like for me, it's all been in the same time. domain, yeah. It's all yeah. been in that domain of, of yeah. you know, visual communication for sure, yeah. and and then you just, you just start to understand it more and more, and I still don't understand. I'm still learning, yeah. And, it's awesome to, to sort of that's amazing job, yeah. and, and like i think it's really crucial what you say there that like 
you don't have to be everything yeah. to start with. You no. can just be one thing, and Ish. then from that point, just yeah. focus and just build on it. Um, and we we're mentioning before as well. So, like, we live here in beautiful Australia. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're both very lucky to live in the same suburb, which yeah. is a beautiful place. But the the thing is that, um, do you find that sometimes, because we always say it's a lucky country, it's a beautiful yeah. country, it's this, it's that. Yeah. Do you find that sometimes it, it can be a mental kind of block sometimes, where people are like, you know what? Yeah, I think the lifestyle takes over and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. But, yeah. you know, drugs, alcohol, fun, partying and that, that mm. can take over and then yeah. that can take its toll if you do it too long. Yeah. So always got to be thinking long term rather than short term, I suppose. And mm. I think some people, the, the, they get caught up in that short term mentality. Short term. And before they know it, the world sort of moved on and they're still stuck there partying. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Shit. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where, where's the time where do you, gone? Where do you, yeah, where do you go? Like, you know, you've only got one crack at this life, yeah. you know, as, yeah. as you. Yeah. You know, you might come exactly. back as someone else, you know, but as you right now. It's like know. Daniel's the cyborg <laughs> version of everything we've been saying for <laughs> the last four months. Um, <laughs> Uh, and exactly and so right. you, you got to like milk it. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm like milk trying to milk well. myself, like yeah. as much as I can work out, like sort of squeeze out the juice of yeah. who I am. Yeah. And, and that's another thing. I think the key is just to learn how to be yourself. Mm. Like, you know, I'm always trying to think about what it is that makes someone successful. Yeah. I think it's having that courage and confidence to just go, I am me. I'm going to say what I want and yeah. do what I want and and live how I want. And yeah. and. When people say they see that, like mm. people say it's in there, it's in your eyes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people you don't see that, yeah. but the ones you see it, that's why they're successful because yeah. people allow it. They say, "Yeah, go for it, man! Yeah. It's awesome." Yeah, I they know. get inspired by it, you know. And, and yeah. like, do you find like often? Uh, and I know we mentioned, geez, I hope I know Luke got caught a lot of this footage, but we were saying before um, about when we go out and we're talking to people, you're at an event or something, yeah. and you're networking with people, and. There's so many stories that I can say, I'm, I'm sure you've got yeah. countless stories as well, where you're just like, you just feel that energy in the room and you feel kind yeah. of energy from people who are that kind of way of th yeah. thinking yeah. and you're just kind of drawn to them yeah. and then all of a sudden you've got this There's net network and yeah. just things happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, oh, like how important like is networking in your business? It's number one, yeah. man. Like, um, I've got... Number one, Luke. Number one. <laughs> number one. I always That's say, number, I always say networking, networking, networking. So networking, like... We're actually going to edit that whole time out. <laughs> <laughs> Networking's got a bit of a, a stereotype around it. It's yeah. a bit cheesy and a bit, yeah, yeah. But that's not really networking, like. Because um, I think the thing is, yeah. where we're coming from with that is that people often think networking is that you're seeking something to, yeah. get about, to, nah. to gain something yeah. from it. But where you're networking, you're purely just talking and you're just, you're just loving to hear new information. You're, you're meeting new friends and, exactly. and, and colleagues and alliances. And I did this thing called BNI Business Network International for about five years when I first started my business. When I first full time, that was one thing that. I, really glad I did yeah. and what that is is a weekly meeting every week you go to this meeting of other business owners mm -hmm. and there's only allowed to be one person of the type so I was the only graphic designer in the group there'd be a lawyer there'd be a accountant there'd be a financial planner there'd be a plumber there'd be a bookkeeper wow. and every week you get up and do what's called 60 seconds talk about your business for 60 seconds so that would teach you really well on how to sell your business to other people yeah. and how to speak openly and freely now you do that, but then you do this thing called the dance card. So one person a week would come to your business and you show them your business and just talk about it freely. Mm. And then you go to their business. So you, yeah. like I'd go and sit with a lawyer for an hour and learn about what lawyers do. Like you know what a lawyer does, but you don't get to sit behind a desk with a lawyer and see what they're doing yeah. and that from a day to day. And you start to decode the world. You start to see the world from all of these professions' point of view. It's so powerful. And that's networking. Mm. Yeah, You're really yeah. like getting behind the veil, like yeah. finding out how business works. Yeah. And then when you get to that level with people, they, you get trust, they just refer business to you and you refer them because you know who they are. Exactly. Like you get, you find the people that you don't want to refer to as well because you say they don't really have the values that you have. Yeah. So that's networking and you're seeing those people every week and the conference, and this was five years ago, I've been out of it for about seven years now and I've still got clients from that group and they still refer business to me and I'm, they're friends. We've done Tough Mudder together. We've done trips together. Yeah. And that's networking, man. And that's, that's power. Like, that's, it is. It's, really. And because in community, these people are still there now. Mm. They're here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they leverage you forever if you yeah. have good relations and you do good by people. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's always there, man. It, it's really yeah. funny how you mentioned that. It always comes back down to those foundations, isn't it? Is that you can, you, you've, 
you kind of you can smell a rat. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. if someone is a good person, yeah. th- if they're a rat, they can only put on that persona of a good person exactly, for so long. Man, exactly. You know, and and you can co- you can quickly start. Hang on, oh, hang on. You start noticing yeah. noticing yeah. certain things. And was, as you said, I was talking about this yesterday, and this is why Joe Rogan and podcasts are going yeah. so. And Joe and Sam have talked about it. Sam Harris have said long form conversations now are the winner because. Definitely. You can get past the ratness, like you get past the bullshit and see this is who a person is. Um, Politicians and the media, like traditional media, have got sound bites. You know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, they just have a message they have to sell. If you had to sit down with a politician for an hour or two hours and just keep (laughs) talking about it, before you know it, they're going to be talking about their wives and their family. And then you start to read between the lines. Exactly. And you see this person isn't who they say they are. Like, yeah. And this is a massive, powerful, and this, I reckon it's one of the biggest things the internet's done. Yeah. It's definitely. like authenticity, right? It's, it's literally yeah. cut out the bullshitters. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. literally, you can just, <laughs> yeah. you can tell. Right. And it, yeah. It's yeah. crazy, isn't I know. it? I it's, it's the best. Like, for, mm. I love it because I'm pretty open. I'm happy to share anything about yeah. my life. So, bring it on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, that's it. And then yeah. as soon as you start engaging with someone yeah. and there's barriers that start coming up then yeah. all of a sudden you're like okay cool that's yeah. interesting yeah. because you're you're saying you represent this and you yeah. do this yeah. why are there barriers there yeah, you know, what, right. what is it you're hiding what yeah. is going on there yeah. Um, yeah. it's 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 crazy the psyche behind that isn't and, it? and networking is that like to bring it back to networking like yeah. it's just about uh, finding personalities that you connect with yeah. like not everyone will work for you um, and not to say everyone's lying either it's just there's personalities that mix with different personalities and yeah. you, it's like when you meet a partner or whatever and so basically um, there's enough people out there to find your group of people that are going to yeah. give you enough work exactly. the world's so massive like there's yeah. so much opportunity out there. so when people say that there's not enough work out there that's no. ridiculous mate. you just have to get in a plane yeah. get in a plane and fly from here to Sydney and see the amount of houses there are yeah. I always think of that like, the amount of opportunity from here to Sydney is yeah. just I could have two or three lifetimes worth of opportunity just there. Like right. in terms of money you can make or whatever, like right. lifestyle you can get from it. Excuse, I think excuses are a big thing. Yeah. Like people like kind of like they have, they get to a certain point and then for whatever reason yeah. it stops, you know, and a lot of time they're legitimate reasons. Like yeah. big massive things happen in their life. But, yeah. you know, it's those people who push through that and yeah. then there's, then comes the excuses for the ones yeah. that don't, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a key part. Oh, it's, the- Mate, there's so many challenges that you get there as a business owner. Like, it's there's hundreds of challenges, Definitely. but that, the, the best thing about it is um, having the grit and determination to push through it, do the yeah. all nighters, like solve the problems. Yeah, well, that was literally Mate, the next I've, question I was going to ask. What is the best What is the best thing that you find? Is it literally just being your own man? What is the best thing? Like, you're in control. Well, I think it's that freedom thing that we yeah. started with. Yeah, it's definitely try creating your own path. Yeah, like, I've always had this vision of, um, you know, uh, there's a Frost poem, uh, Rodney Frost, no, someone Frost, famous okay. poet, and he's got this, um, he's got this poem, The Path Less Trodden. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's about, right. we did it in HSC or whatever. Yeah, I think I actually uh, remember it. Yeah, yeah, Robert Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah Robert yeah. Frost, The Path Less yeah. Trodden. And yeah. he said, like, it's all about everybody's taking the same path and yes. the path's just getting worn. It's just the same tracks are going. It's like if you do a track or something, you go, yeah. there's hundreds and thousands of people that have done that path so before. So boring. Yeah, so. Yeah. I like the idea of like getting the machete and cutting through the bush. Yeah. And just, yeah. You know, what just going for a trek. Yeah, going through. Yeah. I love trekking. I do a fair bit of trekking and yeah. stuff. And that's kind of a symbol of that. Like mm-hmm. just sort of going off into your own um, and ex- territory and exploring it and discovering it. So yeah. I love that. Bit. And that in society. So that's what for me is a business is, is a vehicle to sort of go off the beaten track and sort of discover it yourself and make it happen yourself. Like yeah. you can become whoever you want to be. And, so it does take a bit of confidence, a bit of courage to do that, but the satisfaction you get and the happiness the you rewards get. The rewards are insane. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Insane. So, Daniel, mate, we're gonna have we'll do another we're gonna do a long form video. Yeah. So let's let's deep dive into AI and some crazy stuff <laughs> and just start going crazy. There's some stuff I don't know too, so I'll be saying oh, I don't oh, know. Oh, who cares? <laughs> That'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, It'd right. be fun. Yeah, I don't yeah. know everything uh, either, but yeah, it's really yeah. cool just yeah. to kind of talk yeah. to like minded people yeah. and yeah. really yeah. delve into that stuff yeah. um and all that cool stuff. But look um, for the concept of what we're doing, like um, there's a lot of people listening who are kind of maybe starting out with their thing, or they yep. could be just you know it's a pipe dream in their yep. head at the moment. What what's that kind of one bit of advice? I know this is really broad, but what, what's that one bit of advice yeah. that you kind of give them to make that first step and go look? I think one thing is about creating a vision. Yeah, that's massive. Like you know, 
coaches and life coaches, they say create a vision, like a vision board and all this stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you have to create a vision board, but you really have to articulate what, where it is you want to be. Mm. So I had this vision when I first started this, I was in Mayfield East in a little mining cottage. Yep. I was a, a tiny bedroom was my studio. Um, I literally had a window and then a meter away was another window. So I was looking into someone's window every day with my computer in front of that. Yeah. So I had a vision that I wanted to have a massive office that I could rotate my chair around. So I made it really personal and I wanted to look at the beach. You know, yeah, look at the beach. So I just imagined that all the time. Yeah. And I put it on my computer screen, I articulated it, I really visualized it. So when you have a vision, then you visualize. So you've got to articulate and visualize. I kept on doing that. I'm not saying it don't work. I had to work my ass off and create a product maybe, but I had this thing to steer towards. So I, I had a goal, I guess, yeah. from that vision. Yeah. And I just worked every day. And then before I knew it, I paid off that house. Yeah. I could afford to get an ocean yep. side property and yeah. just bloody. That's really powerful what you say. Like, the vision is, yeah. is a huge thing. That was my motivator and drive. Like, yeah. It wasn't airy fairy, man. It, like, that's what people think about vision. It had to be something you could work towards. Yeah. Um, I was reading a guy, Justin Herald at the time, he's a guy who came up with Altitude, which is a brand, yeah. and I wanted to come up with a site, a brand called Cyborg. So he was a bit of a mentor, and that was his big thing, was Greater Vision. Mm. So I just learned that from him. It wasn't like i come up with it. I was reading those books at the time, yeah. which is kind of like Gary Vee and all that sort yeah. of stuff, still reading it. Like, yeah. just um, do it and have the courage to step into it. That's yeah. the thing, like, as yeah. well, I guess. Yeah. I mean, and I think the other thing, we say this all the time, but I mean, like there, there's, <laughs> in one sense, yes, uh, we are. We look, we do live in a very lucky country mm. in Australia. But wherever you may be listening to this around the world, but the, for the folks in Australia, I kind of say there's really no excuse because right. our worst case scenario is a pretty damn good scenario. Yeah. In the yeah. fact that never get another job. Yeah. Like you hate, oh, you hate that job yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Just leave that and, and go find. And here's the job. other thing you can do too. Like if you don't want to do that, yeah. you just do it on the side. Like little exactly. steps. So work at night. Exactly. Like work through the night. Yeah. Burn the midnight candle and um, basically find out what it's like at night time in that new yeah. path. Yeah. And if you love it and if you like it or, or whatever, mm. you'll start to get rid of that old shit. Yeah. And start the new shit and do that new shit on the side. For long enough that you can start making money on that on the side because you can with the internet now, yeah, and social media, you can do it on the side, yeah. and then it'll build enough legs that then you can just give up your full time job and start that. Like, yeah, there's nothing stopping anyone from doing that, and mm. even with online education now, all the platforms that are available, you can do uni degrees on the side, you can do just just how much you want, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Daniel, it's Thank been an absolute it. pleasure, mate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, for, the, for everyone out there who uh, want to know more about Cyborg and the amazing things that they do, I'm going to do these ones because Luke's going to be putting all the information <laughs> down here. Um, and, uh, yeah, check it out. And, uh, mate, we'll definitely be catching yeah. up again and we'll, we'll do a few more long-form chats. And, yeah. It's all, it's I, I don't have time to work. Exactly. None of us <laughs> have time to work. That's, that's what we're, we're doing. Yeah, do what you love. Awesome. Yeah, Cheers again. Thanks again, mate. Thank awesome.